everybody, it's Amy Berger coming to you from the Metabolic Health Summit in Los Angeles, California. It is January 31st and um, I am here at the Metabolic Health Summit. I'm sitting in front of the window, there's some shadows here, so my apologies for how there's some weird shadows on myself, but you know, sometimes when I attend these events I like to check in with you and let you know how things are going and um, this Metabolic Health Summit that they have in January. This is the third one. What, what does it say? Third? I don't know what it says. I think this is the third or fourth one they've had. I've come the last two times. In my opinion, this is probably one of the world's premier conferences in um, ketogenic and metabolic therapies. And so um, we've got, you know, the list of speakers here are names. It's like the dream list of who you want, you would want to have speaking. Who do we have here? Dr. Thomas Seyfried, you know, the cancer researcher. We have um, Mary Newport, whose work I cited in my Alzheimer's book. Um, well, Dominic D'Agostino, of course, very well known. His, his research spans numerous different areas in cancer. Dr. Eric Westman is here speaking. Dr. Stephen Finney. Jeff Volick is speaking. Um, John Rowe. RHO, John Rowe, who is sort of my go-to guy for ketogenic therapies for neurological and neurodegenerative disorders. Um, and let's see, I, uh, I had a book signing here, which was super awesome. The organizers of the conference arranged it for me. All I had to do was show up and sign. I didn't have to take care of any of the logistics. I didn't have to ship books. I don't have to deal with the remainders. But you know, I got to meet some fans and sign some books and it was really just a thrill. There's somebody here, you're probably gonna watch this video. I don't remember your name. You are the biggest sweetheart because you said that I'm your J-Lo. So to those of you watching this video, I had a fan come up to me and say that I'm her J-Lo. She would rather meet me than meet Jennifer Lopez. And then um, I had another uh, fan, another uh, woman come up to me and compliment my book. And what touched me the most, you guys know, I always say I'm a writer first and a nutritionist second. My undergraduate degree is in creative writing. And she actually said how wonderful the writing of the book was, how easy it was to read. And I said, you know, nothing, um, nothing touches my heart more than when somebody compliments their writing because writing really is my first love. And I'm just so fortunate that I get to combine writing with nutrition and health and ketogenic. Like I get to write about keto and, and my master's degree is in nutrition. So I'm sort of one of the lucky few that is actually using some of the education I had in my, in my profession. But let's see what else. Um, I, do I look like I have no hair right now? My hair is up in a ponytail, but I can see it on the video. It looks like I'm bald. Anyway, I just got to meet, you guys might not know this name. He's a rock star in my world. Matthew Phillips. Now Matthew Phillips works in New Zealand, but I just learned he's actually Canadian. He's authored some of the papers that I have been citing in my most recent talk about ketogenic interventions for neurological and neurodegenerative disorders in general. Not just Alzheimer's disease. I've sort of expanded my research into looking at Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, ALS, something called IBM, inclusion body myositis. You might not have heard of this, but you know, if you unfortunately have a friend or a loved one who is or was diagnosed with IBM, you've heard of this, they're looking at ketogenic diets for that. All of it really, really fascinating. So the fact that I got to meet some of these researchers in person, now this Metabolic Health Summit, I'm not speaking here. I'm here as an attendee to learn, to meet friends, to just socialize with people. Like people that I only ever see at some of these keto events. So I've spent time with Amber O'Hearn from The Carnivore, you all know her. Siobhan Huggins, who works for Dave Feldman over at cholesterolcode.com. Um, who else? Sean Baker made a little cameo appearance here. He's not speaking, but he kind of came by. We're in, um, we're in Long Beach, California right now, and I think he's, he's in the area. He's a Southern California guy, so he stopped by to chit chat. Um, who else have I seen? Les Antman, who's a big fan. I don't think he watches my videos, but we follow each other on Twitter. And um, trying to think, I mean, just a slew, Miriam Kalamian, a fellow keto-friendly nutritionist. She specializes in keto for cancer. So it's just a really fun, um, oh, can't forget, Tyler Cartwright and Luis Villasenor from Keto Gains, ketogains.com. I used to, before I knew more about Keto Gains and their protocol and what they do, years and years ago, I heard of them and I was like, Keto Gains, what's that? Some like gym bro, some kind of meathead, what do they know? 
turns out they know a whole freaking lot about low carb and ketogenic diets for bodybuilding, for weight loss, for athletic performance. If I get an inquiry from someone who's like into certain type of athletics, it's really not my specialty. And I don't feel comfortable helping somebody. And I say, your number one resource is Keto Gains, ketogains.com. Uh, Rob Wolf, hello, hello. Me and Rob Wolf greet each other with a hug. Hey kid, how's it going? You could knock me over with a feather at the mere thought right now that Rob Wolf and I are like friends, that like Rob Wolf knows who I am. I've been reading Rob Wolf's blog and I had been listening to his Paleo Solution podcast for years. I think before I was even in nutrition school, we're talking 2009. Now I graduated with my master's in nutrition in 2012. So since 2009, I've been reading Raw Wolf stuff. So um, to see him here and to have him come up to me and say hello, it's like, let me just pass out for a second before I like come back to consciousness. Um, what else has happened? So I don't know if, uh, if I said enough about Matthew Phillips and their work, I got off on this tangent. Matthew Phillips and his group, he, he had a, a, a nutritionist dietitian here. They're just doing some really, really fascinating, really important research into ketogenic diets for things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, IBM, ALS, all that stuff. Now, getting back to the speakers here, like I said, Finney, Volick, Westman, Dom D'Agostino, Thomas Seyfried, like John Rowe, the creme de la creme of the research world. This, in my opinion, is where the top researchers in the ketogenic field, in whatever, whether it's obesity, diabetes, weight loss, cancer, Alzheimer's, all kinds, of epilepsy, um, Eric Kosoff, K-O-S-O-F-F, -F, he's out of Johns Hopkins University in Maryland. I met him in person for the first time last night. We shared a table. We were both signing books. He has a book out with some of his colleagues. The book signing people put us together at the same table. What an honor it was to meet Dr. Kosoff because I don't specialize in keto for epilepsy, but certainly reading about a lot of the, because so many of the mechanisms by which keto is effective for epilepsy hold true for Alzheimer's disease and migraine. And you know, I've done videos on migraine. I, I wrote a book about Alzheimer's. So to meet Dr. Kosoff in person and to be able to say, oh my goodness, like I've been reading your research for over a decade. I've cited your papers left and right. I helped contribute to writing the curriculum to train other nutritionists in the hows and whys of the ketogenic diet. And I wrote the module, well, I did two. I did one on insulin resistance, and then I did one on neuro, neurological disorders, including MS, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and epilepsy. And you pretty much cannot say anything about the ketogenic diet for epilepsy without quoting the research of Dr. Kosoff. So truly a pleasure and an honor and a thrill to meet him in person after so many years of reading his research. And by the way, he's pretty hot and he's a lot younger than you would think for somebody that is so accomplished in the research world. He looked really young. Anyway, what else can I say? So yeah, I, I'm an attendee here, I'm not speaking, and here's the thing. The reason I'm not speaking is because this is really the top creme de la creme of the world's researchers. And I'm not, or I don't conduct research. I don't work in a lab, I don't work with mice, I don't even really work with like human subjects in terms of a research study. What I see my role as, and what, what my role has sort of evolved into over the last few years, you know, I didn't graduate from nutrition school with this thinking, it's, it's kind of evolved naturally over time, I see myself as kind of a middleman. Let me read these people's papers. These super, super intelligent, like really smart people doing this amazing research, finding out new mechanisms, finding out reasons why keto works, how it works, how to, how to implement it best to get the best effect for whether it's cancer, epilepsy, diabetes, how do we make this best for certain applications? I see my role increasingly as being the translator, the middleman between, okay, here's this fascinating, potentially life-saving, life-changing discovery about how and why keto works. Now, I can like barely understand it. How is the average person on the street gonna understand it? The person that needs this the most, the person who is either living with one of these conditions or has a loved one who is, who needs to be the caregiver, who needs to be the, you know, the support system. I see my role as translating and that's what my whole Alzheimer's book is. Again, the Alzheimer's antidote, you can find it on Amazon. 
um, I see my role as translating, let me take the scientific jargon gobbledygook, this mechanism, beta hydroxybutyrate, reactive oxygen species, histone deacetylase inhibition, oh my God, all these words that don't even sound like English, what does that mean? What does that mean for me in my everyday life? What does that mean for when it's time for me to have dinner and what I put in my mouth? Or should I fast? Should I not fast? Should I take exogenous ketones? And I gotta tell you, I've learned some interesting stuff about the ketones, in, and, and this, this conference is only a day and a half old. It's only been one full day, and we had one talk yesterday evening, the whole day tomorrow, so it's Friday right now, Friday, January 31st. This conference is also all day tomorrow, the February 1st, and like half a day on Sunday, February 2nd. Already, I've learned a bit about the role of beta-hydroxybutyrate, independent of the ketogenic diet, that makes me a little more open to using the exogenous ketones, more open than I was before. And I've always been open to the use of them, depending on the context. I don't think they're a weight loss tool. I don't think they help much with reversing things like type 2 diabetes or PCOS or any of these sort of insulin resistant conditions. I've said all along, I think they may be beneficial for various reasons in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. I'm clearly always the caveat. I'm not a medical doctor. Um, I'm a nutritionist. None of this is medical advice but I will do videos in the future as soon as I figure out how to record myself walking you through some of the talks I've given with my PowerPoint slides, I'm going to upload them because I think some of you are going to love it. It's going to be really educational, really helpful on Alzheimer's, on Parkinson's, on insulin in general. So um, I'm going to try to figure out how to do that, but then you'll, you'll understand why I think that the exogenous ketones can be beneficial in some of these um, contexts, but I've, I've, my mind has been open now to the possibility of using the ketones for applications that I wouldn't have previously used them for. And so I will keep you in suspense. I will just have to do more videos on that. But, you know, just wanted to check in from the conference again. I'm sorry this is so shaky. I'm holding the phone with my hand. I'm not using my webcam. But, um, you know, these, these videos where I check in from conferences seem to be pretty popular. You guys like it. And I've just had a really good time here. I've met a lot of... Um, heroes of mine, you know, in the research world, people that I've looked up to for years, people whose research I respect. And then I have encountered fans of mine that love my work as much as I love these other people's work. So it's really um, encouraging and heartening. You know, I, I keep hinting at the fact that I'm going to do videos about this. I do live with depression and some days are better than others. Some weeks and months are better than others, but it, um, it helps me to know that what I do is is valuable and that some of you find meaning in it. Maybe this whole keto without the crazy thing has helped you come back to some semblance of balance. You don't have to drive yourself crazy. What about my macros? What about this? What about that? What about fasting and autophagy and blah, blah, blah? Um, it's, it helps me to know that when I think, you know, when I get out of bed, who cares? Does it does it matter if I get out of bed today? Who who would miss me if I didn't get out of bed? And look, I'm not, I don't mean to like scare you with that statement, but if I stay in bed all day and sleep or I get up and write, what difference does it make to the world? And maybe not a whole lot of difference, but clearly there's a few of you out there that it really does make a difference to. And that is really all that matters. If I'm helping anybody out there, then it's worth it and because I've been helped by even some of the people here, some of the people that I've gotten to meet, I've been helped by them and I'm grateful for them. And um, you know, I, I hope to provide more helpful content. Um, and I have a couple of ideas for some new things I'm gonna be putting on Patreon. If you're not a Patreon yet, patreon.com slash to it nutrition, I'm actually gonna tell you to hold off. Don't join yet because over the next two to three weeks, I'm gonna have some new tiers of support and offer some things that I think you're gonna be very interested in, especially if you um, have some, you know, have some depression, have some, you know, negative self-image. If you are a big nighttime eater, a nighttime binger, I think there's gonna be some Patreon content that you're gonna find very valuable and that I'm really looking forward to putting out because I think it'll help you and help me. It's going to help myself too. And that's it. We're coming up on 15 minutes coming at you live from the Metabolic Health Summit at the Renaissance Hotel in Long Beach, California. We're about to have a VIP mixer where I get to 
mix with the the big wigs and um, you know hopefully <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna have some wine because you know it wouldn't be too at nutrition keto without the crazy if there wasn't coffee in the morning and wine at night <laughs> thank you for watching thank you for your support and I will see you next time bye bye